Welcome everyone, I'm the Depressed Dior, and this is Bregadine, The Legend of Forcina. It's a, um, fantasy RPG, or sorry, a strategy RPG, um, by, for the PlayStation 1. So, I kind of wanted to give you guys some variety as far as strategy games concerned, besides, you know, Civ 5, so we're going to play this game, or at least attempt to. I've been having real bad luck. When Fraps does its little thing where it chokes, it, will, it actually crashes my emulator here. So, I'm trying to work around it. Anyway, let's just get this started. Um, there are f five factions to pick, to pick from. There's also a sixth faction in the middle, which is the antagonist. Um, there is a trick to play as the sixth uh, faction, but it's pretty easy, and there's no real story for it. Um, each of these characters have their own little things about them. Some start out with more cities, some start out with more knights, some start out with better knights, some have a lot better, um, a stronger leader. Like this, like for new Almechia, the prince um, of uh, Almechia, who's the leader, starts out at level one, but he can level up and you know build up strength and all that. While other characters like um, the leader of Norgard can, um, he starts out at a higher level, like around level twenty, so he doesn't really level up much, but he starts out pretty strong. So it's a little variety. Um, if you're a newbie, I suggest maybe new Almechia and Car Carolion. They both start in pretty defensive positions, start out with pretty good guys, um, and they're both allied to each other, so they don't attack each other unless you attack them first. So um, it's a good idea for newbies. Um, what's tough for newbies is probably Norgard, because they start out with four um, cities they have to defend instead of the standard maybe one or two. Um, but if you're also if you're good at the game, Norgard's probably one of the easier ones simply because you can just take over things a lot faster because you have so many borders you can attack at the same time. But uh, for our playthrough, we're going to play as Leonia, um, which is a religious country surrounded by natural barriers. Um, I generally like the, the, the start you have for Leonia. Um, the, the leader is low level, but she starts out with a lot of magic. So as she levels up, she just pretty much gets exponentially better, which is pretty good. Um, her, the starting knights and monsters she has is not particularly great. Um, she does start out with a phoenix and a... Uh, Holy Griff, but other than that, uh, there's not much to work with. But I'll show you guys some tricks that make it a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to probably try to explain as I go, because there's a lot of things to explain. This is a strategy RPG, so there's leveling up, there's classes, there's upgrades, there's items, there's uh, there's quite a bit in this game. I'd say uh, this is kind of like a unknown gem for a lot of people. You either, you either like this game or you've never heard of it. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, if you choose, uh, uh, due to my emulator, it's, there's a bug where it shows the domain and mana as the same no matter what. It always shows 6 and 797, but the knights and monsters is correct. Uh, you do start out with 11 knights and uh, 26 monsters, and in this case you do start out with 6 uh, cities. So let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Um, the difficulty levels, um, it decides how the AI acts for the most part. Um, on easy, the AI doesn't attack very much, and it's very, very stupid. It, like, literally will just rush you no matter what. So even if it's defending, um, which if you're defending, it's usually a better idea to stay near your city so you can get, like, extra health and all that. AI doesn't do that uh, in easy. They'll just rush you. Um, in normal and hard, the AI will actually defend. They'll actually stay in place. They also become a little bit more aggressive um, in the map. Like, they'll actually attack your cities and stuff like that. Um, also, the difficulty level decides the time limit for this game. Uh, generally, I don't like time limits in strategy games, but in this case, you have plenty of time, um, even on hard mode. Um, this game is uh, done in months, as far as turns are concerned, so you have 12, uh, 12 turns a year. Um, and easy, you have 60 years to beat the game, um, or take over everything, whatever. Um, on normal, you have 30 years, and hard, you have 12 years. Um, generally, I would beat... I, I generally will beat this game in maybe t in under two years if you're showing any amount of aggression. Um, so it's just it's pretty easy to take over everything, um, especially if you start taking over like multiple cities at once. If you're taking over one city at a while at a time, it can get a little slow. Anyway, I'm gonna do this on hard mode. Um, the AI does get a little smarter. They don't really cheat. There's no real cheating like in other games where the difficulty gives them more stats or anything. That doesn't happen in this game. They generally just they just get with it. They pretty much run just like you do. They have upkeep. They have mana. They get. They can summon monsters. If they lose monsters, they lose them forever until they upgrade some new ones. Stuff like that. 
which is definitely a, a, a good point about this game. Um, if you're new to the game, uh, hard mode can be a little bit difficult. Um, but if you're experienced, uh, you pretty much know all the crux of the uh, AI. Let's go ahead and continue. And hope the game doesn't crash. For Sina, the land of mysterious maroon power. It is the Sacred King calendar, year uh, 214. Uh, Elmechia, the most powerful country located in the center of Forsina, has finally won the war against the country of Norgard. It was believed that Elmechia was about to return peace to the continent. However, Elmechia Kingdom, capital Lorgris. This is the exact center of the map. This is Zemeckis. Where is it, Kador? Your Majesty, a year ago you lead us to the victory over the King of Norgard, who was the worst en enemy of Elmechia. Also, you consolidated our victory by taking away a part of their territory from the King's successor, Vaynard. The peace on this continent and the prosperity of our kingdom are all due to your achievements as commander of the Elmechian army. Get to the point. I know you didn't come here to tell me that. You're right. I'm here to tell you that King Heguus uh, has a warrant for your arrest. It seems that those who are jealous of your achievements have given him this idea. You're being charged with treachery. That's ridiculous. I've done nothing but devote myself to the, ki the victory and prosperity of this kingdom. How dare they question my loyalty? They must die for this. I like how this that's the conclusion here. I have all I have done all the preparation and all I need. Now is your order. What? You're telling me to really become a traitor? There's no other way. It is time you killed the king and became the new leader. Haha. <laughs> your majesty. Well, it wouldn't be so bad to become a king after all. Why wait in vain for others to destroy me? I shall fight since that is the, the way I live. Or, you know, you could turn in Kador and maybe get in their good graces again. I don't know. Because he, no, he's the traitor. Uh, whatever. All I want is power, and I will not tolerate anyone who gets in my way. Kador, summon the entire army. It's time those pigs in the palace realize how much power I have. Yes, sir. My only concern is that once I stand up and fight for my th uh, throne, it will not only cause a disorder in Elmechia, but chaos will spread throughout the continent. Do you still wish for me to do this, Kador? Why are you asking him? We must make sacrifices in order for a king to reign successfully. I mean, please note this guy has freaking like a skull for a face. I am certain that you can rule not only Elmechia, but also the entire continent. I understand. I am now determined to fight until I become king, regardless of the disorder it may cause. The entire continent may be burned in the process. Sacred King Calendar, Month 2, Year 215. A coup d'etat was pulled by the commander of the troops of Mechus. King Heguus was defeated and the castle was occupied by the commander's army. The long history of the Mechia Kingdom was put to an end and the Ascaris Empire was born. If you, um, if you choose the uh, new Elmechia as your faction, you'll get an extra little cutscene after this one um, about the prince's escape. It is the beginning of a new era of disorder and chaos. The soldiers are led to the battlefield where their fate awaits. And there you go. Leonia, roof, roof of the castle, Talus. Isn't it a nice day, Pilaf? Yes, indeed. It has already been a year since I was given the oracle and became the queen. The oracle? Well, I do not believe in any gods. Kill off, I'm sorry I didn't mean for you to get involved. Don't get me wrong, I don't want you to think that I became a knight for you. I just wanted to become stronger, that's all, so don't worry. Thank you. The duty of a queen is very heavy and I don't feel confidence uh, in myself. So your support means a lot to me. It's a great honor that you feel that way. Excuse me for interrupting, but I have an urgent report to make. What is it? Is something wrong, Bishop Patternus? As a matter of fact, yes. Please come with me to the ballroom. Everybody else is already there. Castle Talus, ballroom. This, uh, this report just came in. Commander Zemeckis started a rebellion and overthrew Elmechia. 
A new Ascara's empire was built with Zemeckis as the emperor. I can't believe it. A great country like Amekia would fall so easily with a revolt uh, from one of, it, of its ministers. We have no way of avoiding a war at this point. The rebellion of Zemeckis and the fall of Amekia have stirred the hearts of the ambitious people of the continent. Does that mean that the land of Leonia will be involved in the war as well? Don't worry, because when you worry, it'll show on your face, and that will make everybody in this country worry. I don't even know where this is coming from. Sometimes you do say nice things. Hey, what do you mean sometimes? Anyway, it is certain that we can't avoid conflict with the other countries. Okay. Am I going to be able to handle this matter? And the game begins. Uh, there's two, uh, every turn you have two parts to it. You have organize and you have attack. Now, to organize pretty much takes care of ev everything involving logistics, like sending, sending knights on quests, moving knights around, summoning monsters, organizing, leveling up, equipping, using items, etc. And then attack is just that. You, you attack with what knights you have active. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Where's my... There we go. Let's go to the save. Yeah, as you can see here, I beat this game in, like, this is, like, literally the last turn. There's 40 domains, and, um, I was, I pretty much beat it in just under three years. So, yeah, it's pretty easy to beat this game. Well, you can beat this game relatively fast if you, uh, keep up the pressure. Alright, let's go ahead and place this save. It's not a big deal. As you can see, you can place the Eskari's army, though there's not really any point to do so. It's actually pretty boring, because there's not... There's no uh, recruiting, there's very little recruiting in the game, and no story, so there you go. So we start out with 6 domains and 591 mana. Mana is your currency, you use that to pay upkeep and to pay and summon monsters. Um, each little city here has an income amount, depending on the city, like this one's 213, that one's 249, and so forth. The more cities you take over, the more mana you get. Uh, the more monsters you have active, um, or summoned, uh, the more your upkeep is. My cat is going berserk behind me. Anyway, I'm going to cut the video off here briefly just to make sure I'm able to actually stop recording. If I can't, uh, well, you won't see this video. So, I'll be right back. Alright, success. I was actually able to stop recording, which means um, now everything, all my files are saved and I can keep going. Alright, I'm going to try to explain things as I go because there's a lot to explain. Um, here you can actually, if you, well, I'm pressing various buttons here, but uh, you can see here how many domains, knights, and monsters you have in total, how much current mana you have, your income, your upkeep, and how much you make per month. So um, it's a good idea to try to get some mana saved up if possible. Um, every little city here, you have the option, even if you have no knights, you have usually the option to summon. Every, uh, every city has its own monsters it can summon, like this one can summon merman, lizardman, wyverns, and rocks. And you can pull up stats for all of them. Um, the monsters do level up, um, and they can be upgraded. Or at least in most cases, they can't be. Some have multiple upgrade paths, some don't, etc., etc. Just seeing what I have access to. Rocks, giants, clay golems, and unicorns. Um, the disadvantage for Leonia is you don't get access to very many... There's only one city that can summon dragons, and there's, only, and there's no cities that summon um, demons. Which is the big deal. Here's angels, griffins, mandrakes, unicorns, centaurs, gins, and pixies. Um, for beginners, a good trick is to use gins. Just use nothing but gins. Uh, a unique thing about the gins is they um, they level up very quickly. Um, they're also a they they have they're low sky type, which means they can pretty much hover over everything, so they can move pretty relatively easy. Um, the only disadvantage they have is the fact they are not very strong, and they have no actual, um, they don't have an actual melee attack. What they have is a special ability they can use after moving, which is unique to them. Usually you can't use a special ability after moving. Um, in this case it's Air Storm, which is a 2 hex move. It pretty much blows air across uh, 2 hexes and does damage to anything in those 2 hexes. Um, by itself, by himself, a Jin's not too much, too special, um, especially because their Airstorm uses up mana, so they're pretty much just two-shot wonders, and then they're practically useless. 
But if you have a lot of gens, you can definitely like do little assassination attacks on um, key units with these guys. You just surround a unit and just blaze them with air storms. But um, I've been trying to get away, getting away from using gens simply because it's really kind of a noobish move, and you don't really get to see very many upgrades because you're just using nothing but gen gens. Um, they do upgrade into a three hex attack, and it become elemental based depending on what gen uh, upgrade you pick. But uh, we'll deal with that later. Um, I'll probably talk about the monsters as I use them. So let's see what we got. Um, as mentioned, you start out with um, a variety of different um, starting knights as well as your leader. Um, Leoness, Ness, or Le Leonessa, or how you pronounce it, is a, a unique unit. Um, she's a queen as her class, and she starts out at level 3, which is rather low. But she has 262 rune power which is awesome for a level 3 character. Um, what rune power does is just decides how much, how much, uh, how many monsters you can have active. Um, each monster has their own rune cost. So as you can see, it's 80, 85, and 30. That totals up to 195, so that's why it says 195 out of 262. So, um, the thing about Le uh, Leonessa is that she has, uh, she starts out with magic 7, which means she knows 7 magic spells. She doesn't learn any other new spells, but she as she level up, she'll get more mana, stats, and so forth. So she, she just gets stronger, and she has all the spells she really needs. She has, um, heal, area heal, divine ray, and holy word, so she has offense and attacks, uh, offensive healing spells. So there you go. Also, you can pull up, um, data on each of the characters, give them a little background, um, like it says here, the Queen of Leonia, a sacred country. It, she used to be an ordinary village girl, but has chosen to become the queen by the prophecy. Everyone is moved by the way she strives to fulfill her duty as queen. Kaloth has been her close friend since childhood. So there you go. Alright, uh, let's do some organizing. If you, uh, you can pull up the status screen, which is just like the organized screen, except you can't do anything in it. Um, the reason there is a status screen is because you can pull up the status screen um, during the attack phase. During organized, you don't really need to use the status screen, you can just do everything from organized. As you can see, you got a bunch of stuff you can do. You can change the name of your monsters, though I don't bother. You can delete monsters, you can uh, use items, which generally include um, certain special upgrade items, or items that just increase stats. Um, there's also equipment. Oh, actually, item. You do start out with a. You always start out with one potion. Um, in this case, uh, you start out with a wisdom potion, which increases intelligence by three. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that on her. Now her intelligence is 84, which affects how strong her magic is. All right. Uh, Equipment-wise, uh, we don't have very much in equipment. The way you get equipment is by doing sending knights on quest. Um, but just to show you. Uh, Patterness starts out with a Gravity Mace, which he's equipped with already, which increases the attack by 12. Nothing too special. But it does make him stronger than Call Off, as far as melee is concerned, which is pretty good. Anyway, um, there's also classes, where you can actually uh, upgrade or change classes. If it has an X, that means you can't change the classes at all. You can't even, you can't even go down a class. Can you change classes? Uh, your only option is Ranger. Lame. You'll stay a Barbarian then. But you can change classes back to a different one. Like, you can go from Cardinal back to a lower class. Um, you can't go back on a uh, on your tier on your ladder, though. Like, in this case, Cardinal is the top class for Clerics. It goes Cleric, Bishop, and then Cardinal. So you can't just downgrade yourself back to a Bishop. But you can downgrade yourself to another, like, path, for example. Alright. But there's no reason to do that for him. We'll keep him as is. Anyways, go ahead and do some more organizing. Sorry, this is going to be a lot of logistics stuff right now. This is a phoenix. It's an upgraded... It's a... Um, the way you get a phoenix is you upgrade... You level up a rock to level 10, and then you can upgrade them to a phoenix. Which, um, if you see under the icon, there's these little orbs. The orbs are pretty much the size of their element. Um, so for phoenix, they have three uh, red uh, fire elements. Which means they're very, they have a very strong affinity to the uh, fire element, which means they do a lot more fire damage, and they resist fire greatly. But if they get hit by something like water, they could be a lot more vulnerable. Um, they have two attacks, which is Fire Claw, which is just a very powerful fire attack, um, and Heal Voice, which is a special ability which uh, heals everyone, including enemies around it. Um, then he, its special ability is it recovers 10% of its HP every turn, so it's a very durable creature. And then. 
you got Holygriff, which is an upgraded Griffin. Um, you just level up a Griffin to level 10, then you can upgrade. Um, the main benefit of uh, the Holygriff is they start out... They, they up, a, a regular Griffin has a one holy, uh, white orb, and a Holygriff has two, which means they have, more, they have a stronger affinity to uh, light. And then um, he has a regular attack, which is Beat Clash, and then a special ability that he cannot use after a move, but it's a ranged attack, which is nice. Ranged attacks are always good because they can't be countered. And then we got the Pixie. Pixie is level 1. They do upgrade into, I believe, Fairies. Um, now, the thing about the uh, Pixie is they have a Stick Tap, which is a very weak attack, but they do have a special uh, critical attack, which can only be used when they counterattack, called Leave Me Be. Which does a lot of damage, does like 100. Um, the, really, Pixie's just a support character. They can cast Silence, which will prevent people from casting spells, and then pr cast Protect, which boosts up an ally's defense. Pretty much you use Pixies for Protect until you can upgrade them into uh, Fairies, and then they get an even better spell that is awesome. Alright. Sorry, let's get that fixed. There we go. Can you fit? Mm, kind of. Yeah, that works. So... Yeah, I can do this. Angel. Angel is a kind of an all-rounder unit. has very uh, decent stats across the board. Um, their attack is kind of weak in the beginning, um, but they get b much better throughout the game, um, especially when they get upgraded. Uh, the main benefit is they can cast magic. They have a lot of mana, uh, or a lot of MP to cast magic with. They can cast heal, and they have divine ray, which is a single target, very powerful um, light spell. Very great for uh, sniping units. Alright, got those characters taken care of. I wouldn't mind having this Pegasus. Let's go ahead and move you guys around. Hmm, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna use some of these units. Go ahead and get, go over here first. All your units start out kind of spread out. Uh, a key thing to note is the AI does not attack on the first turn, which is good. You can if you want to. Um, there is some benefits for doing so, but in, for Leonio's case, there's no real point to do so. And now let's go to organize. What's this? What's this group got? Uh, we got some wyverns, a griffin, a, fairy, a pixie, unicorns, and two gens. Don't really want the gens. It's kind of a challenge for myself to just purposely not use gens. In fact, let's go ahead and do that challenge. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. I'll free up some upkeep. Anyway, uh, one of the things you want to do, for at least for this faction, is these two characters. Um, they start out as experts and cleric, which means if you're an expert in a class, uh, which you you gain uh, expertise in a class as you level up in it. Um, if you become an expert, uh, your spells for that class will carry over to any trans any uh, class changes you do. So, as an expert, right now a cleric starts out with Heal and Halo as their spells, and I'm going to go ahead and convert her into an Enchantress. Yeah, Enchantress use Whip. Alright. Now, as an Enchantress, Enchantress starts out with four spell elves. They have uh, Ice Magic, which is Frost, Geno, Frost, Fog, and Charm. But since she is an expert as a um, cleric or a priest or whatever else she was, she also gets Heal and Halo. So she has a good uh, mix of both healing and attack spells. Also, you get, as um, Leoni uh, the um, country of Leonia, you start out with a lot of holy base units, like clerics and monks and, and clerics. Or, in, you know, priest and stuff like that. And you really don't need that many. So, we're gonna convert these two characters into Enchantress. So, you have two healing Enchantresses, which is awesome. And there you go. Good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and do some. Hmm. We'll do some organizing. We'll do that. Actually, who has better stats? Actually, you have more rune power, so we'll just go with you. Alright, what we're going to do is go ahead and move Philo up to here. Oh, and also, we need to go to options. Up the 
cursor speed. Um, we'll keep battle scenes and summons on for right now, but if it, it does... Some of those battle scenes do lag, even when I'm not recording, so... Uh, swift units on, that just shows that they'll just instantly move units instead of just showing them slithering across. You also see the computer fight each other if you really want to, not a big deal. So let's go ahead and out. Um, if it does become an issue, like slow down and stuff, I will probably turn off the um, combat movies and all that. What do we got here? We got some rather awful characters. Well, actually, Chantel's... Chantel's not too bad. Anyway. I'm trying to figure out... What can you summon? Can you summon Gen Okay, you can summon rocks. That's cool. I'm trying to figure out... Okay, you can summon centaurs. I like... I've uh, grown very fond of using centaurs. Uh, since they're range, they're very mobile range units. Um, they start out kind of iffy, but they get a lot better th uh, throughout the game. So what we want is to go ahead and move you down, move you down. And let's go ahead and summon. Uh, well, we don't have very much mana at all. That's That kind of sucks. Let's go ahead and just summon an angel. Nothing there. What do we got here? Sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place trying to make sure I get everything. Uh, clay golems. Clay golems are pretty useless. If you saw it from that little movie in the beginning, they got ki killed pretty easily. Um, they're actually very durable, but they have uh, very low agility, which means their hit hit rate is awful. Like, they miss often. If they do hit, they do pretty good damage, and they can take hits pretty well. They also have a very long upgrade path. If you happen to get them very... If you manage to upgrade them to, like, bronze golem and stuff like that, they, um, they can become pretty durable, and they get things like rock throw, but... It's not worth it. It's not worth the trouble. So, I'm just going to delete them. Actually, I probably should keep them. But I'm going to go ahead and delete them anyway. So I don't have to deal with them. Alright, um, what do we got here? We got Charlene. And some other people. Class. I want to change your class. Because I really don't like using monks. I'm going to go ahead and convert you into a fighter. go. Also, because he is an expert monk, he's a fighter that knows healing cure, which is pretty awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and do some ordering. You know what? You could probably take everything. Yeah, go ahead and take all of this. So we're going to go ahead and move, we've already moved you, so we're going to go ahead and move you down here. And let's take a look at her status. This is Charlene. She's a, a lancer, which they use a spear, they have a special ability to throw a spear, and they start out with some very, very basic blue magic. They're not really known for their spells. Let's see. Do I really want to use you? Two that are him. Kind of just comparing stats at the moment. You have 217 attack. You have 223. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and use Isfas. Actually, do I really want to use Isfas? So many choices. Yeah, let's go ahead and, um, better idea. I'll do what I was intending on doing before, so let's do that. Um, scorpions are pretty much one of the weakest units in the game. Um, they do have the ability to poison with their attack, but it's not really that special. And I think my cat is hissing at something. Um, we've already talked about the pixie and the angel. Let's talk about the rock. Rocks are the that thing you upgrade. You can uh, level up to a um, phoenix. Um, they start out with two abilities. They have a, a solid claw, which is a claw attack that can pe 
petrify enemies. Petrification is uh, is pretty powerful. Uh, the AI seems to always get it the trigger when I don't. Um, Crybird is uh, pretty much the opposite of what the heal cry was. It was um, it does um, damage to everyone, including allies around it, and can paralyze. So that's pretty awesome. Anyway, what can you summon here? Oh, you can only summon up the griffins. That kind of sucks. Oh well, let's move you out. Right there. And let's do some organizing. And we got mandrakes. These are pretty, they're durable units but they're not strong. Um, the only benefit they have is they can move for, through forest very quickly, and their attack can cause paralysis. Let's go ahead and move these guys off. Uh, giants, they're kind of like golems, but they're a little bit... No, they do not. They don't have to get hit rates. Um, they do upgrade to pretty awesome things if you bother, if you actually take the time to do so. Um, I'm probably not, because I don't, because giants are just as bad as golems in most cases. If you do get an upgraded giant, though, um, you can get some pretty awesome stuff. If you get a Loki, for example, you can you can have a giant that can cast Meteor Storm, which is one of the most powerful spells. Uh, unicorns are a support unit. Um, they can cast Heal and Cure. Um, the crit has a special ability to push back units. That's about it. Alright. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and send these two guys on quest. As for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and send you guys up to here. And anything else? Okay, and we're going to go ahead and move you down to here. So I should have three knights going to here and three coming down to here. So that'll be guarding our borders. Um, this city here is one of the easiest places to defend if you happen to have things like centaurs and stuff, which this place doesn't. That might need to be fixed. In fact, I'll probably just keep a guy around here. Yeah, I'll keep Asmund here so I can summon centaurs and then try and throw them over. Um, as for this place, we'll send you guys on quest. Uh, sending people on quests can do a variety of things. They can unlock new characters. Um, they can you can you can upgrade stats. Um, you can find items. You can find equipment. And you also it can also fail and nothing happens, or it can fail and you can, your your knight will be injured and you can't use them anymore. So there you go. Let's save the game. Slot one. Sorry, this is a little slow start, but I'm kind of trying to explain everything as quickly as possible. Yeah, 91 mana. We're going to be kind of hurting on mana for a while. And if I lose city, is that going to really hurt me in the beginning? I'm hoping not to. Alright, so let's... Um... Oh, if you pull up Domain, you can actually see what all has been taken over. Escara starts out with the most stuff. Alright, let's go ahead and execute. There you go. Um, you notice that this flag is no longer fluttering, that means there's no knights there. Just make sure there's no monsters just lingering around. Okay, I think we're good to go. You can also pull up the stats of the uh, border cities. So you can see that this guy has a Gygas and a Bahamut, which is a freaking powerful stuff. But it's nothing really to worry about. And then our other border neighbor here, we got eh, some easy stuff. There's an archer here, though. Okay, so there you go. Okay, we're in okay state at the moment. So let's go ahead and just execute. We're not going to attack this round. Um, if you move a unit, you won't be able to do anything with them. As you can see, I, I just moved this unit so I can't attack with them. So I really have no one to attack with, so let's just execute and end our turn. 
Okay, um, this is what happens when uh, cert a quest can take any, uh, a, a random amount of time. Sometimes it can activate immediately, sometimes it doesn't. So let's, um, I'm going to go ahead and read up the first few quests, but eventually they're just going to start repeating themselves, in which case I'll just skip through. So here's Chantel's quest. Chantel visited a village. One man came over and introduced himself as the mayor of the village. The situation is that the Fenrir has settled in the forest behind our village. I must ask you, could you please tame the Fenrir? All right, this is a monster quest. Um, there is a chance this this will have. There's a chance that you can tame a monster, and it, you will get it for free. Chantel listened to the mayor's request and went to the forest immediately. Usually, these fail though, just to let you guys know. The forest was dark with no sign of life. All of a sudden, Chantel felt as if someone was watching from behind. As Chantel turned around, there was the a Fenrir. If I move, I could die. Chantel knew that was the case. Chantel glared at the Fenrir, and, the, and as the Fenrir glared back. They could not keep their eyes from looking at each other. The time passed by in silence. Since they couldn't move, they just stared at each other all night. As Chantel became tired and started to lose concentration, the Fenrir just escaped. Although Chantel was appreciated by the villagers for carrying out the mission, Chantel started for home on a, on a down note because the Fenrir got away. So there you go. Noth if you fail the mission, nothing happens. Um, but if you get, sometimes you can get a free uh, unit, and it can be very useful. Like that Fenrir was an upgraded Hellhound. Um, which I definitely would not mind having, especially since it was a dark unit, which we can't even get access to at the moment. So Chantel returned from his quest. All right, more plot. Inside castle, uh, inside castle tower of prayer. Excuse me for interrupting, Your Majesty. What is it, Asmet? Is something wrong, Asmet? A messenger ha has just brought this letter from Norgard. It states that King Vaynar wishes to meet with you. Really? That's what the letter says. However, he is not called the White Wolf in Norgard for nothing. We should be careful. I suggest we send someone else instead. Someone else? Why? He has a point. It could be a trap. A trap? Well, I will meet with him. Queen Leonis. Of course, I'm afraid of him, but I won't. I don't want to ignore it. I will go. Okay, I understand. I will arrange it. Castle Demas. This is that if you... If you happen to not have uh, Leonessa at the castle, she'll go over to the castle. But it's nothing really that gameplay related. It is nice to meet you. I'm Vaynar, the King of Norgard. I am Leoness, the Queen of Leonia. I'll get right to the point. I would like you to choose who you are going to support. Is Leona going to support Norgard, or are you against Norgard? What? You've got some nerve to say something like that. Just as I thought. King Vaynar. Leona, uh, Leonia is a country which has governed itself even when uh, Almechia was in power. I'm sorry, but we cannot support anyone. Very well, then. I guess you're declaring a war against uh, Norgard. Wait, we do not wish to fight. I promise we will never attack Norgard, so please leave us alone. I told you to choose. Such an indecisive woman like yourself is not qualified to rule a country. Leonia is now mine. So, you really wish to fight? Well, if you don't want to become a part of us, we will have to take it by force. You're being unreasonable. I guess we have no, have no choice but to fight. We, the country of Leonia, declare war against Norgard. Remember that I will never forgive you for involving the people in, Le in Leonia in the war. Whatever. No one can say that they are not involved with when the continent is in turmoil. Also, you were speaking with an, a tense voice when, we, when you could have controlled your frustration. Well, I'll see you on the battlefield. Ha ha ha. What a wicked man. Is he gone? Queen Leoness. That's not even... You misspelled it! Sometimes you amaze me. How were you able to talk to Vaynar like that? What? Oh, I'm just not myself today. Oh no. What's wrong, Leoness? My legs. My legs are shaking. I can't keep my legs from shaking. You've done a good job. Here, lean on my shoulder. Thank you, Killoff. Why does Vaynar choose to fight? I don't understand. I don't want to fight with anybody if I don't have to. So yeah, it's just plot stuff. Um, the funny part is, um, I did play a passive game where I played as Leonia and did stay neutral. Like, I literally didn't attack anyone, I would just defend. And Norgard never attacked me. They, yeah, they literally never attacked me. Um, the only people that attacked me were, was from this city, which was either the, uh, Escalio army or the, eventually it was Carleon. So, it was kind of funny that he was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna take your city. And never attacked me. Anyway. We got some organizing in do. Um, since it is a new month, we do have access to um, 
more mana, I believe. Yeah, we have 900 mana at the moment. Which is good, because we need it. Alright, for the sake of just making sure we have units to defend with, let's go ahead and order. You could have this for right now. It's nothing too special, it's just some giants. It's just some things to soak damage. And... Kinda just seeing what I can use at the moment. rocks, those are nice. But what I pretend I'm doing is I'm going to defend here and I'm just going to push out from this side. Because it could be really tough to expand on this side, so we'll be focusing there. Anyway, uh, what was I going to do? I was going to summon some stuff, so let's go ahead and summon some um, centaurs. Is that good enough? Four centaurs should be good enough. Let's go ahead and summon four centaurs. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and summon another angel. So that pretty much uses up all our mana for the turn. Kind of sucks, but nothing we can do about it. Let's uh, organize. This is your stock of monsters. If you have no knights in an area and it has monsters, it's going to be over here in this little stock area. Oh, that's awesome. I summoned an angel last turn, and I didn't move it. Because I'm an idiot. Alright, alright. I know how to fix it. This is me being awful at this game. Let's go ahead and move Chantel over here. He'll pick up the stuff. Well, let's just organize. That's what we'll do. And then we'll move you down here. Hopefully we can hold our own. I'm gonna go ahead and save just in case I get attacked. If I get attacked, I should be able to hold them off. But you never know. So if I get pushed back, I'm going to be in deep trouble. Um, if I get pushed back in the southern side, that's not going to be too big of a deal, but I doubt I'll ever be pushed back in the southern side. I'm that confident. Simply because the AI really doesn't know how to deal with a 300 situation. Alright, let's go ahead and execute. I'm making this video purposely long just to take care of all the tutorial stuff. Alright, I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and move. If we really wanted to, we can attack, um, but we're not going to. Actually, I wouldn't mind attacking, but... What do we got? I don't know, this might be workable. See what I got. I got a Phoenix, a Holy Griff, an Angel... I have more monster. I have one less monster than him, but I do have stronger monsters. And then I have Kill Off, of course. All right, let's go ahead and try it. So let me go ahead and save the. I've already saved the game, I think. Yeah, I saved the game already. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and cut the video off here. And when we come back, I will do something very reckless, and I'm going to attack Humber here. So I'm the Depressed Eeyore. And this was Brigadine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.